This video segment will help you de-escalate situations involving individuals with a developmental disability or DD. Individuals with developmental disabilities may become more quickly stressed or agitated in situations that they don't fully understand or feel supported. The person may exhibit challenges and or traits that you are not familiar with or comfortable with. These expressions may be the best or even the only way they have of communicating a need. If they aren't being understood, situations can escalate and become intense fairly quickly. Individuals with developmental disabilities may become more quickly stressed or agitated in situations they don't fully understand or feel supported. The person may exhibit challenges and or traits that you are not familiar with or comfortable with. These expressions may be the best or even the only way they have of communicating a need. If they aren't being understood, situations can escalate and become intense fairly quickly. There may be some underlying factors causing the behavior. For example, they may be feeling unsafe, feeling sick, not understanding what is occurring, not being understood by those around them, fearful of what is happening. If you haven't already viewed the segments on identifying and communicating with an individual with a developmental disability, you may find them helpful. Look for early warning signs of an increase in stress or anxiety. For example, changes in energy like pacing, increased fidgeting like ticks or hands flapping faster. Verbal changes such as speaking faster, louder, repetitively, or using self-talk. Sudden changes in emotion, such as suddenly stopping smiling or starting to cry. Attempting to draw people into a power struggle. Thomas, yes. I've already asked you a couple times to turn that off. Please turn it off and go clean your room. Nope. You've had your 20 minutes. Now let's turn it off, please. Nope. You turn it off, or I'm going to go turn it off. Nope. You lock my game. I'm going to punch wall. I'm going to punch you. If you don't settle down, I'm going to have to call the police. Nope. Can't make me. There are strategies you can use to help prevent a situation from escalating. Here is Dr. Jessica Jones, Associate Professor of Psychiatry and Psychology, Queen's University, and Clinical Director of the Developmental Disabilities Consulting Program. One thing is important to remember that individuals with developmental disabilities like structure and predictability in their environment because they're easily confused about abstract situations. So routines are very important. And any change in that routine, especially unpredictable change in routine, can be distressive for them. In any highly emotive situation, individuals with developmental disabilities may become easily agitated. Um, they may react in an angry or even oppositional manner. It's important to, for officers to think that, or to recognize that they may be scared or worried about the situation that they're in. They may not understand what is being asked of them. They may not understand the environment that they are in. Therefore, being empathetic to their level of distress is going to help in any interaction. Also, we need to remember that individuals with developmental disabilities, majority of their decisions made for them are made by others. So to be, officers need to be sympathetic to the limited control that they have over their lives. So sometimes behavior can be uh, manifested in this ability or even desire to have a little bit of control over one's life. And that comes across in even an interaction and being oppositional in nature sometimes. Like you or I, they benefit from positive feedback. So in a difficult situation, regular positive feedback can neutralize negative emotions, especially for someone who is feeling unsafe or insecure in a situation. It would be important for officers in any interview to find a quiet location even to sit down, to take away the power imbalance, and to slow the pace of their interview. You would really need to minimize any distractions in your environment, even the unobvious ones, so bright lights, or even noise from uh, equipment in the room. It's important in any um, highly emotive situation to stay calm, but more importantly, look calm. So for officers going into a difficult situation, um, there are some um, strategies that can be used to make the situation calmer. 
uh, first limit the numbers of people talking. You could trade off in terms of point people if the other, if the individual is gravitating to a different officer and is able to become calmer in that situation. Maintaining distance and respecting personal space is important and I think we all have different ranges of personal space. Use a calm voice to ask questions or give instructions. Validating their emotions is very important and sticking to core feelings in terms of sad, happy, um, angry, scared. More complex feelings or emotions may actually aggravate a situation if you're trying to identify that with somebody. Sometimes a situation might have already escalated by the time you arrive, or there may be other factors that increase the intensity of a situation. Watch for these behavioral signs, refusal or an increasing resistance to any requests, becoming challenging, perhaps asking more questions and not taking suggestions, verbal changes in tone and volume, increased physical activity, loud or bad language, especially self-talk and swearing itself. In addition to verbal conversation when you're trying to de-escalate a situation, it would be really important for officers to use visual aids. Not only um, a white piece of paper with a black sharpie trying to um, extrapolate what you're trying to get at, but also just gestures are really important. So intuitively we may not be natural gesturers, but it would be helpful to de-escalate a situation with gestures. Thomas, I told you I was going to call the police. Thomas, what's going on? Thomas. Answer the question. In my face. Yeah, I know I am. Too bad. What happened? Leave me alone. We're not going anywhere. Thomas, what's going on? In my space. Okay, Thomas, can you put the pen down? Fuck off. Put the pen down. Nope. Put the pen down. You don't need to be so harsh. I didn't call you here to make it worse. Ma'am, you called us here, okay? We're trying to deal with this. Thomas, I need you to cooperate with the officers. Fuck off. Thomas. Fuck yes. off. Thomas, just tell me what school you go to. Fuck you. Now what? Oh, I think you guys have done enough. You might as well leave. Are you sure? Yep, you've got him so upset. <laughs> Thomas, the police are here to talk to you. Hi, Thomas. I'm mad. Thomas. Okay, calm down. <laughs> Thomas, it's the police, okay? Do you want to have a seat on the, on the couch and <laughs> talk to us? <laughs> What's going on today, Thomas? I asked him to shut the TV off so he would clean his room, and he wouldn't, so I had to shut the TV off. She made me mad. So what has got you angered today? Because he had to shut the TV off and go... Ma'am, would, would you mind if we just talked to Thomas alone and maybe come okay. upstairs there? That'd be great. Thanks so much. So, Thomas, now that your mom's gone, why don't you tell us what's bothering you? She turned my game off. Your mom turned your game off? Why did she turn it off? Because I don't clean my room. You have to clean your room. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to do that? Mm -mm. Is that a rule that you guys have? Mm -hmm. So would it make sense that your mom has turned your game off so that you can do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I see that you broke the, the light there. Yes. You, you know you can't break things. Mm -mm. Nope. How come you broke the light? I'm mad. It would be important for uh, officers to provide answers to immediate questions or outcomes rather than talk about long-term consequences because the individual with developmental disability may have total difficulty in understanding long-term consequences. And using unthreatening, unthreatening boundaries would be important and repeat regularly to, again, aid comprehension and to check that your information you're getting is correct. Okay, Thomas, do you feel a little bit better now? Yeah. Yeah, you seem like you've calmed down quite a bit since we've got here. Yeah. Is there going to be any more problems going forward today? No. Nope. Or are you and Mom going to have any more problems today? No. Nope. No? Should I be concerned for anybody's safety when I leave here? Nope. No? Nope. Okay. So you understand, you know, we don't want to have to come back here, so are the police going to have to come back at all today? No. Nope. No, that's no. excellent. That's exactly what I wanted to hear from you. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. You're
Here's a list of resources that may provide you with further knowledge and support.